When looking at the tongue, you can see two forms of papilla located on this back portion in a V. These large circular papilla are known as the circumvallate papilla. The next smaller on the anterior two-thirds of the tongue is the fungiform papilla. And then the filiform papilla, you can't actually see, they're too small. Just remember that papilla are not taste buds. You can also see the body of the tongue here, the root of the tongue, the dorsum of the tongue, and then if you note on this model, you can't actually see the lingual frenulum. It would be located here and anchor this portion of the tongue to the bottom of the mouth. All right, we're going to be going over the structures of your nasal cavity here. Um, starting with your cribriform plate of your ethmoid bone. So you're not going to be able to see that cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone because it would be coming out horizontally here. And that's going to be where all your olfactory foramen are at, that the olfactory, those olfactory nerves will run through. Uh, next structure, perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone is right here. It's this whole structure. And then your vomer here. It's going to be this whole structure. Next, we're going to have your nasal septum. And your nasal septum is going to be that whole piece right here. So this would be your, it would sit like this in your actual skull and dividing your left from your right cav nasal cavity. So that nasal septum is made up of the cribriform plate or, sorry, nasal septum is made up of your perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, the vomer, and that hyaline cartilage. Alright, um, next structure, your superior, middle, and inferior nasal concha. Here's going to be your superior nasal concha. Just here. All of this. Here's your middle nasal concha. Here's your inferior nasal concha. Okay. Next is your superior, middle, and inferior meatae. The meatae are just referring to space. So your superior nasal meatae is this space right here underneath the superior nasal concha. Your middle nasal meatae is this space here underneath the middle nasal concha. And your inferior nasal concha is this space right here underneath your inferior nasal concha. Okay. Next structure is your external and internal nares. Your external nare is going to be this right here. The exit of that nostril there. And your internal nare, nares are just referring to space. So your internal nare is going to be the space from here to here. So right where I'm running my little stick there. That's space. It's not an actual structure. It's space. Remember that. Okay. Um, next, you're going to have your olfactory foramina. You're not going to be able to see them on this model, but the olfactory foramina are in that cribriform plate, and that's what all these olfact the olfactory nerves would run through. Okay. So here we can see your olfactory bulb, your olfactory tract, and then here would be your olfactory nerves little fibers coming out there. Okay. Final structure we have on here is going to be your station tube or your auditory tube. So right there is going to be the entrance to the eustachian tube. Oh, and then one more thing. Right here you can see the beginning of that optic nerve. Here's your cella tersica. It's right in front of that. Next we're going to go over the outer and middle ear together and then we're going to hit a couple structures that are also from the inner ear, but we'll actually, it'll just be middle and outer. Um, so the first structure you have to know is called your auricle or pinna and that's going to be just this outer portion of the ear. The whole thing is called the auricle. 
The next one is called your tragus, and that's going to be right here, this bump on the more anterior part of your ear. And they say that you're not supposed to pierce that because there's a lot of cranial nerves going through this region, or a lot of nerves, and not cranial nerves, just nerves. And if you pierce that and it gets inflamed, it could cause some problems with uh, your functions of your face. The next one you have to know is called your external acoustic meatus, and that's going to be right here, the external acoustic meatus, and that is leading to your tympanic membrane, which is going to be in here, and I'll show it to you again later, but that's right there. Point to it again, so just so you can see it right there. We're going back, so starting on the middle ear, we have what's called your petrous part of your temporal bone. I already said it in the uh, middle ear too, or inner ear, but this is your petrous part of your temporal bone, all of this, and that's to protect your inner ear. So I'm going to pull that off. Pull that off of there, and you can see within there all of your inner ear structures right here. I'm also going to pull those out of there just to get them out of the way. So as I said before, we have your tympanic membrane. I'm going to pull this off. It might be a little difficult. Pull that off. This again is your tympanic membrane right here. And then I'm going to put this back on again. Turn it a little bit. And this cavity back behind here is called your tympanic cavity. The muscle that leads to your um, tympanic membrane is called your tensor tympani, and that is this muscle right here going to that tympanic membrane. That muscle is utilized when there are loud noises present, and that muscle just basically locks down your ear so you don't go deaf and it doesn't hurt your inner ear. The next structure you have to know are the ossicles, or the bones of the ear. Pull this off again. So these ossicles, the first one is going to be coming off that tympanic membrane. I'll pull this out of here. And that's going to be called your malleus. So that's going to be the first one right here. And you can see where it divides right there. So all this below here is the malleus. The next one is called your incus. And that is going to be this whole bone right here. And then that leads to get this other portion of the ear, that leads to your stapes, which is this bone right in here. It's kind of tough to see in there. But that's your stapes, and that comes into contact with your oval window, which you can see on the back side here, right there. So that's the oval window. The muscle that goes to your stapes is called your stapedius muscle, and that can actually be found right here. So that's your stapedius muscle. And actually that aids in like when you're chewing food and stuff like that. Um, it aids so you can hear the stuff that's going on around you. And then the last one you have to know on this model, I'll have to put this back on again. If I can get it. It's called your auditory tube or your station tube. And that is this whole canal going down to here. Now we'll be going over the inner ear. Uh, in your lab manual, the first structures or things you have to know are called your osseous and membranous labyrinths. And the osseous just means bone. So within your skull, this is actually within the temporal bone and it's all within bone. So this is all protected by that petrous part of that bone. And then within that bone, you have your membranous labyrinth, which is this right here. So that's your membranous labyrinth of your inner ear. The first part, well we learned the nerve vestibulocochlear, so we know that's going to go to here. The first part of your inner ear you have to know is called your cochlea, and that is this structure right here, and it looks like a snail, and that's the reason why it's called cochlea. The next two terms you have to know are called your oval and round windows. So looking at this model, 
your oval window is going to be right here and you can see it's in the shape of an oval and that is where your stapes is going to connect to and then the round window is going to be down here and the reason that is there is for pressure and that that round window flexes when you hear something so your inner ear doesn't explode flipping this around again the next few things you have to know are called your ampule utricle and saccule and each one of your semicircular canals we have one two three semicircular canals have an ampulla and the ampulla on those the first one's right here turn this a little bit the second one is right here it's that bulge and then I'll turn it back around this way the third one is right here the next one you have to know is called your utricle and that is going to be this first large one that comes from all three of the semicircular canals and then the next one is going to be saccule which is further down right here an easy way to remember that is called AUS Australia so AUS going down AUS okay so we went over the semicircular canals already there's a superior a lateral and then uh, one for it for um, the angle and you can't see the the internal auditory meatus on this but we'll get to the nerve now so coming in we have that vestibular cochlear nerve and this is the whole thing right here vestibular cochlear and that branches off so if I can I'll take part of this cochlea off here and flip this like this and if you see coming into the cochlea right here, that is going to be your cochlear branch of your vestibulocochlear nerve. And then there's two places where you can see the vestibular branch of the vestibulocochlear nerve. It's going to be this branch that's branching off to the vestibular portion of the inner ear. And then off of your utricle and your saccule, both of these nerves right here are also vestibular portions of the vestibulocochlear nerve. Another thing to note is this thing dangling off the ear right here is called the endolymphatic sac. So that's where your endolymph is going to be produced. And if we go into here and we look at this inner ear right here, you can see there's two there's three different colors. You have a pink, a green, and a blue. So your pink is going to be your vestibular duct so that's vestibular duct and your green is going to be your tympanic duct membrane sorry mem either and both of those are going to be filled with perilymph and then the blue is going to be your cochlear duct and that is going to be filled with endolymph All right. We're going to be going over some of the structures on the outside of the eye here. Uh, your first terms are eyelashes and eyebrows. I'll let you look in your book for those, they're pretty tricky. Um, next we have tarsal plates, so that's right here and right here. So they sit underneath your eyelids or your palpebrae. So this would be a palpebrae with skin on it. Don't look at that face too long, it might blind you. All right, and next term is conjunctiva. So conjunctiva is a thin layer of membrane, and it sits on the inside of the eyelids. So all this right here, and on the outside of the eye. Okay, so the way that would be asked on a test or something, it would, it would, they would say, what membrane sits here, or what membrane sits here, and the answer would be conjunctiva. It's not a specific thing. Okay. Next is your orbicularis oculi muscle. You can't see that on the on this model. Just remember, it's that big muscle that's set all the way around here, and uh, works with those eyelids. Next term is your levator palpebrae superioris muscle. We're just going to turn this to the side. And your levator, your levator palpebrae superioris muscle is this one right here. It sits uh, most superior here. So you can see there's two muscles here, 
This one underneath here is the superior rectus muscle. And this one is the the levator palpebrae superioris muscle. Okay. All right. Next term is your canthus. And your canthus is just the corners of the eyes. So you have a. This would be your lateral canthus right here. And this would be your medial canthus right here. It's the lighter pink portion right there. Okay. So that's a medial canthus, is that lighter pink portion. Next, we're gonna have your lacrimal gland and ducts. So this is gonna be your lacrimal gland up here, as well as this. And your lacrimal ducts are gonna be all those little, those little lines like this one I'm pointing to. Uh, the lacrimal glands will make your tears, and then the tears will flow through those lacrimal ducts. Next is your lacrimal caruncle. And your lacrimal caruncle is this darker pink portion right there, very medial. Okay. Then the lacrimal canaliculi are these structures right here. Tears will flow through them. And also, right there. So they're both. Lacrimal canaliculi. Okay. Next structure is your nasal lacrimal sac. Your nasal lacrimal sac is right here. Your nasal lacrimal duct is this space down here. Okay. And then, so the nasal lacrimal duct duct refers to the space when it has the membrane in there, but if I were just to say nasal lacrimal canal or foramen, I'd be referring to the space but without the membrane. So if you can imagine this membrane being gone and then having just the white bone there, then that would be the nasal lacrimal canal. And one last structure is, if we get this eye back on here, a little black dot right here. It's called a puncta. All right, we're gonna go over some of the muscles of your eye here. So first one is the superior rectus muscle. So that sits superior and like right in the middle. And so now if I put this on, this can be a little tricky. Here we can see your superior rectus muscle. It's this bottom one running all the way back. And remember we already said this top one is the levator palpebrae superioris. So just make sure you're careful about that. Okay, next one is the inferior rectus muscle. And that one is a little bit tricky to see on this model. If I turn it down, I can see my inferior rectus muscle right here. So it sits right in the middle and inferior. Okay, so it's inferior rectus muscle. Okay, so in my lateral rectus muscle, it's going to be this one right here on the lateral side. And my medial rectus muscle, can't really see it very well there, so I'd go right here. It's going to be your medial rectus muscle, just sitting in the medial side. So those four are all pretty straightforward. Where it gets a little bit more tricky is your obliques. So, we're going to take a look at your superior oblique muscle, which is right here. So your superior oblique muscle runs up here, goes through your trochlear notch, which is right here, and then it's going to come over here, and here's that tendon of it, you can see. Okay, so uh, something to note is SO4. Uh, that's just to help you remember which cranial nerve innervates this muscle. So SO4 stands for superior oblique and then cranial nerve 4, which is your trochlear nerve. So I'll help you remember that your trochlear nerve innervates the superior oblique muscle. Okay. Next muscle is right here. And that's going to be your inferior oblique muscle. Okay. And so it's inferior oblique muscle. And one more uh, memory device to help you out for this lateral rectus muscle. You can remember LR6. 
can remember LR6 or lateral rectus 6. So that means cranial nerve 6, which is your abducens, innervates this lateral rectus muscle. And then the oculomotor nerve will uh, innervate all the other muscles besides lateral rectus and superior oblique. Now we'll be looking at the cavities and tunics of the eye. First, under cavities we have the anterior cavity, and that's going to be from the lens of the eye, which is right here, to the cornea of the eye, the clear. That all makes up the anterior cavity, and it's going to be filled with aqueous humor. The anterior cavity is broken up into the anterior chamber and posterior chamber. The anterior chamber is going to be from the cornea to the iris and the posterior chamber is going to be from the iris deep to the lens. The posterior cavity is going to be from behind that lens all the posterior of the eye that space within is that posterior cavity and that is going to be filled with vitreous humor. Now on to the tunics. The first tunic is the fibrous tunic. It's the most superficial tunic. For that we have the cornea. Makes up that one-sixth of the globe, the anterior one-sixth of the globe. And then we have the sclera, which is the, all the white around. Makes up the five-sixth of the globe. On to the vascular tunic first structure is going to be the choroid coat. That's going to be outside here. You can see it's highly vascularized. After that we have the ciliary bodies and muscles. So we're going to... You cannot differentiate between the ciliary body and muscles on this model. So together you're going to know them as this. Then you have your suspensory ligaments of the lens, which are going to be the white. Next term is going to be the lens, which goes, let's sit right here. After that we have the iris. The iris is going to be the colored portion on that anterior surface of the eye. Pupil is going to be the space, the hole in the middle of that iris. Now on to the neural tunic. That's the deepest tunic of the three. The first term is the optic nerve. It's going to be exiting on that posterior portion, the optic nerve. The retina is going to be all the pink within. Fovea, which is going to be the yellow dot, and the optic disc or blind spot is going to be the white. 